Obo di no kuandi sa business yo. Mo ifris. Osobolo kumanya. Mwendo kwe bintu yo lina mo business yo. Mfurumia. Ne nyingiza. Mo business yo. Awo yu wara e. Esobolo kulo mlimu kwa yo kwe misolo. Obudu unji. Ah, nenda mwami musokeche sitegera. Ifris, e yingire tia mu business yange. E, kakati, e nkule nea Ifris. E yingiza business yo, mu system ya URA. Kumanga, techari chabu ntubu la mu, okugere kilo musoro. Ogutari mutufu, mabati ebeleza butebeleza. Hey, chochitufu, dela banange, chochitufu. Kumanga mazima wadre omusoro kwa de guapala bupazi. Mwagena nosa suru omusoro, guote manyiko mutuena maguru. Kwa gama bambi. And uh, good morning taxpayers, wherever it is that you're watching your TV from. You are live on uh, the Live Tax Lounge, the show where we get to uh, share feedback with you on uh, key pertinent issues that are concerning revenue, mobilization, revenue administration, and uh, service support. And today I'm joined by a set of uh, diligent ladies who have been cooking. They've been in the kitchen putting together a very wonderful product and today we are going to be diving into that product. But before we get into there, for purposes of uh, context, I must tell you about uh, what is happening at the URA. Uh, when you visit the URA website, you will find something scrolling. And uh, that scroll is uh, the URA touch point. We made sure that it scrolls and it grabs your attention and you see it even if it wasn't your intention to necessarily see it, to prompt you to click on it and uh, you take a plunge into that world. But beyond that, what is also happening at uh, URA is that we are seeing a significant reduction in uh, the number of uh, working clients who used to come to ask uh, about elements that they could actually take care of online. So uh, that is also in part due to uh, the launch of this new product that is uh, the URA Touchpoint. And without further ado, please allow me to uh, invite the ladies to, you know, say their hello. Then thereafter, we take a dive into this new world that is the URA Touchpoint. I'll start with uh, the lady on my extreme left, and that is none other than Grace. Yes, good morning, our listeners. We are very delighted to be with you once again as Uganda Revenue Authority. My name is Grace Nakangu Hiram Koko. Uh, Grace, what do you do here at URA? At URA, I am a change management expert. Yes, I am there. I am the person that is there for your feelings, for what you feel about whatever URA is cooking, for whatever your complaints are about. Can we address them? How can we address them? Are we reaching out to you? Are we actually touching that point? that is an itch to you, that is being an itch to you as far as tax is concerned, as far as your needs towards complying to Uganda Revenue Authority are concerned. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Grace, for making the show. Uh, our season change management expert. And uh, on uh, the, the, the further left, I do have uh, Aisha who is also seasoned. She's been around for a while and she's, she's been doing great things. Aisha, say hello to the viewers. Good morning, our dear listeners. Um, I'm Aisha Kaweja. Uh, I'm a domestic, I work in domestic taxes, but currently posted on a project and I'm a business analyst. And my role is to investigate those issues and advise others on where to tap in regards to processes, systems, where are their gaps, and then we bridge together. Fantastic, fantastic. It, it would be unfair for us to uh, take a direct plunge into the, the, the new product that is uh, the URA touch point without talking about the mother of uh, those products, and that is none other than ISSP. So uh, mm -hmm. at this very minute, my very first uh, inquiry is going to be asking Aisha to speak a bit about ISSP. Uh, mm, the integrated service support is, this is, is a integrated service support project. We started in 2020 with the aim of harmonizing service support across the organization. 
Uh, we have had many products which we have put out, and one of them, the first one, was to institute at the contact center because it's the center of virtual support. Given the fact that our services are online, we expect you to be able to reach us online still when you encounter any challenge. And then this touch point is our other baby, which we have brought also to harmonize support so that those who cannot reach us through other channels, uh, the toll free line, the WhatsApp and other social media channels can use this solution to still let us know what is, is that that is hampering their compliance. And we are also working on changing the URA websites, which will come be coming soon, and we shall announce when it's ready. That's the work in summary, what the Integrated Service Support Project is doing. Uh, thank you so much for uh, cooking. The, the project has been cooking, and indeed, the taxpayers can attest because now uh, they get automated uh, responses to their inquiries that come through via the social media platforms. Definitely. They also do have a WhatsApp line, which is another product that uh, has been cooked by the Integrated Service Support Project team. Sure. And uh, they have a chat provision on the URL web portal. Yes, like you're on the portal, you've come to do something and you get stuck. The chat pops us. up and you're able to, you know, ask a question That's and true. and all these are elements that uh, have been brought courtesy of uh, the project to further enhance the service that is being rendered to the taxpayer and the taxpayers, I'm convinced, are enjoying these services. But that brings me to the hottest one, the new baby in the building, and that is none other than the URA touch point. Grace, what is this thing? The URA touch point, ladies and gentlemen, is yet another support platform. What it is, is that it is a system, a solution that URA has brought on board to manage and analyze its interactions with you, our clients. By management, I mean we are going to be able, like Solomon has mentioned earlier, we are going to be able to address all your pains through an online platform. It's not that we have not been able to do that before, but how well have we done it? So that is why I'm talking about a solution or a system that is going to be used to manage. By management, I mean there is an aspect of requests coming in <clears throat> by clients and us giving them prompt feedback or responses and us keeping knowledge within that system and us using that knowledge or data to improve the staff that are there to respond to these and in there, there is a very critical issue that has been missing all along. As we analyze, how are we able to analyze or manage the interactions of these clients? When you log in to URA, either via the social media or email or the toll free, you have been doing that with whatever set of staff that you have been dealing with. And nobody else would get to know how well you were served, what you were intending to get, whether or not the resolution was reached. Today, the biggest, biggest point about the touch point is that it integrates all these support platforms. And so URA is able to have visibility into what exactly is happening via the phone call via the SMS, via the WhatsApp that you have mentioned, via the live chat, what is coming in. So this client will come in, log in, they are given a ticket or a reference number, and through this system mm -hmm. and its ability to have integration and visibility, we are able, URA is able at whatever level to track what is going on. If it means that whatever you're requesting for, whatever you're asking, inquiring about, requires, has a standard service um, SLA level agreement to be that it should be delivered in one day, we have to follow that because then you have to get the response within that one day. If it is 30 minutes, 
you have to get the response in 30 minutes. So you have a lot of benefits that we are going to talk about. But in brief, the touch point is an integration, a system that is going to be used to integrate all support platforms in order to have visibility into what the client wants from URA, inquires from URA, is issuing URA, and then we are able to respond as per the agreements that the staff are initially or the promises that we put out there for the clients. Uh, sounds pretty much like a service you can touch, uh, if you ask me, yes, uh, yes, being yes, delivered yes. on the URA touch point. And uh, we are all here for it. We are looking forward to exploring this platform. But before we do, I would like to uh, ask a question to Aisha. And this is coming from a, a, pos a position of concern. You know, URA has an avalanche of uh, systems. URA has an avalanche of platforms that are here for, you know, their taxpayer. And uh, now we are introducing something that is even new. And the taxpayer is wondering, okay, what are we doing here? Do we really need uh, the URA touch point? Aisha, that's the question that I'm feeling to you. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, URA has those several platforms as we are, uh, we are aware about. Uh, but the challenge we have been having is that URA had not come out as an organization to communicate to the public a unified way of reaching us. Mm. And that has been the biggest problem mm. we have had. As an, as an organization, because we have seen clients call our personal line, they send us emails through our inboxes, others have CRM they communicate with, they call them, others also reach out through the toll free line, others reach out through all those channels. The problem we have been having that there was no unified way defined even to staff that when a client reaches you, this is how you conduct yourself to get the issue resolved end to end. We had not defined that even to our staff. Now we are coming up to define that this is the way clients can reach us. We are communicating to you these channels, the public, uh, the official channels, the toll free line, the WhatsApp line, uh, the services mail, please reach us through that mail. Uh, this touch point in itself is also a channel you can use to reach us. And we are integrating now all these channels and having the visibility all through. But to take you back a bit, uh, before this project, when it was starting, uh, our, our research was done. Mm. So that us as the project members, we don't walk our own journey. We get to appreciate the actual problem informed by the voice of the client. Mm. And what came out in that report, it was very, very prominent that uh, most of the, the people who were interviewed mentioned that it was hard, very complex reaching URA. And some say that if you need any support from URA, you needed to know someone there. And us as an, as an organization, that's not the image you want to portray. And others say that if you don't have anyone there, you call the boss. That's why bosses are always overwhelmed with calls, because we had not come out to communicate any unified way of how clients can reach us when they have issues. Also in that report, it came out that the issue resolution rate when a client has an issue, it reaches one of us, others mind to resolve, where other staff don't care. But then we, or we as leaders, we didn't have any visibility in what was happening, what client we're talking with, uh, with our staff. And also complained about quality management, that we told them that an issue has been resolved yet in the actual sense, it has not been handled by the staff. Mm. But then we had no way of reviewing the quality of the interaction our clients have with the staff. And they also com complained about how your echo manages feedback. They say in that report is stipulated that clients give us a lot of feedback, but then URA comes up with initiatives not informed by any client voice. We are here jumping from this initiative to another, but then none of the initiative apparently may address the current challenge our clients have. So this now we are communicating the official unified way of reaching URA is through the official channels which we have integrated through the touch point. And this touch point will be giving us visibility all through from inception when an issue comes in at the end, when the issue has been resolved and how has, has it been resolved. And also giving you an opportunity to appeal just in case 
dispute the resolution you've been given just in case you are not satisfied. That's not something that has been happening and we want to achieve it using this solution. Sounds a lot like two-way communication if you ask me. Yes, sure. Yes, it's, sure. Uh, not, not about you are telling the guys on the other side that this is what it is, it is what it is. No. Go with it. They are, them also have to tell us and also give us feedback. Fantastic. Grace is going to come in with uh, a hot one, then uh, I'm, I'm going to fire away because I, I have another hot question. Yes. The interest uh, of the thank you, Aisha. I just wanted to add something small to her submission mm -hmm. in regard to your question. The public in the past would come to URA. We are one organization. Whether or not an importer needs help from us or someone wants to pay tax, domestic tax, whether someone is being investigated and so is dealing with the investigation department, we have quite a number of departments here, eight. But that doesn't mean we are eight organizations. We are one organization. What the UR a touch point is bringing on board is for us to stop having a solution for customs. And for that, I would allow me to mention that customs has had a tool, a help tool. What the URA touchpoint is going to do, customs has had, which is called the customs help tool. Domestic taxes has had something. Investigation was trying to get something in order to reach, in order to touch base to with their clients. With the taxpayer. But we are saying that is not right because one thing is connected to another. While you're in DT, there is an income tax that is called. While you're in addressing customs issues, there are things that may come up that may affect you via investigation. So we have said as you are ready, we want to talk one language, one place where we can meet you, where we can engage with you, where we can serve you, where we can get in touch with you. So Friends and uh, citizens of Uganda, I just want to make an announcement of sort that that will be no more. Please suffer no more. Don't run to 10th floor because you're looking for customs. Don't run to 4th floor because, no, this is a platform where whether customs, importer or anything, everybody is going to be addressed with the same platform. So in a few weeks or days, Clients, citizens of Uganda, we shall not have customs help to anymore. We shall close it. We shall have Uganda Revenue Authority touch point. In there, the staff of customs will receive. Everybody will be able to address whatever it is that you need from URA. In terms of support, not in terms of I want to file a return and then I come and use the touch point. No, that does not take away our transactional systems. Please take note. So if you've been doing DTS business with DTS or ETAX or a SCUDA, whichever system that URA has presented to us in order to pay taxes, in order to be assessed, in order to declare, depending on what you want to do with URA, please keep doing that. But in terms of support, let us come to one place, a unified place like Aisha said, which is the URA touch point, and let us speak and engage with URA. Not as DT, not as what, not as what, that is no more. So we shall come through to you shortly and make that communication that we shall not have those small independent uh, departmental help tools. Yes. Thank you so much, Grace, for uh, making that full clarity. Uh, before I ask my next question, would I be correct to summarize the URA touch point mm. as a one-stop resolution solution center for all URA inquiries? Yes. That is what it is. Yes. I have an issue in Ascuda, I can have it sorted here. Yes. I have an issue with ETAX, I can have it sorted here. Yes. I want to inquire if there will be an internship opportunity. I can do it here. Fantastic. Amazing. You're bidding. You have any challenge? You can. Um, this thing that customs does periodically every after three months, mm. 
option. I can inquire here. Yeah. Yes, you can follow up. Even you can a supplier who is following up on a payment on from finance, you can use the same solution. You're being delayed. You don't know where to start. You're inquiring. You're stuck. You need information. You're already working with us, but you don't know where your goods, your status of payment has reached. Please just come in. Previously, people have been relying on uh, quote unquote a plug. Mm -hmm. I know a guy. You are a, I know a guy. No, 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 no. You won't have to. That story is anymore. Ending. It has ended. By the way, there is a bit we have not talked about. You want to report. any avoidance and you feel for this nation and you feel that you are needs to know that there is some bit of unfairness because people avoid because the neighbor is actually evading and you feel you need to get in touch yes you can use the touch point yes you can use the toll free and press a figure which is four and then you should be able to tell you are ready this business of children who have left campus, they want to know, inquire about internship, those students who want to get jobs, people who are following up on interviews, you have a platform, feel free. We have HR in there and you can ask any business unit. We shall be learning later how to use the what. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for that. I know um, you have hinted on uh, some of the elements that I would like to ask the next question for, but uh, I'm now wearing the shoes of a taxpayer yes. because I actually pay my taxes. Mm -hmm. And as a taxpayer, I'm wondering, should I really be excited about this thing? If I should, then why? Okay. Um, the taxpayers, you should, yes. because uh, one of the things that have has been missing is uh, as URA, URA management, they did not have visibility in what was happening. When you contact a staff, you call a, past, a staff telephone contact, he has gone for barrier and you are not supported. Uh, we have clients who have CRMs, um, uh, large taxpayers, medium taxpayers. CRM uh, they have uh, client relationship managers. And even we have introduced client relationship managers in different offices. But then, while you're interacting with this person, we may not get to know what your interactions oh, yeah. were. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when this person is not in mm -hmm. office, you may not get served. But when you use the touch point, we are broadcasting it to the whole office. So that's anyone available can still support you. Mm -hmm. You do not need to talk to that one person. Yeah. And also, the other, the other um, benefit the taxpayer gets if they use the CRM is that it never get the you, issue you, you never gets lost. We shall track from the time it came in, and when you were served, and we shall also be able to tell that you were not served. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we can also tell that the quality you were given was not appropriate. Mm -hmm. And also, each issue here has timelines. We have tagged the timelines within which we have to respond to you, based on how this impacts your business. There are issues that are urgent to you and also how they impact your a business. Mm. And when, when you don't lodge it here and give it to a staff, they take their own time. Mm. But here we shall be able to track and we shall put those staff on pressure to ensure they serve you in the required time. That has been missing and this is now what will help us to serve our clients well. Of course, this is not news. Most of the clients have complained that they have reached out to us and actually they have not been supported. And this is very true. But then we have not had visibility in what they were reaching us for and who they contacted. But now we shall be able to track. That sounds like a very good reason for me to be excited. Mm, yeah. And on the as client a tax side. Side. But uh, I also want to ask whether the service providers are going to be held um, quite often, especially during those days of public holidays. Uh, Service providers often suffer with uh, things like the finance guy. Probably mm -hmm. that country is not yeah. available. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Like he wants to inquire about yeah. how far you know yeah. what the situation yeah. is looking like, and he yeah. he can't get anyone to give him actual you know feedback. Is this yeah. a solution that is also going to help 
with, with visibility even on that front. Absolutely. Everyone, that, Everyone in will, Europe, mm, that will also include uh, the people with, with whom we do business, the business partners, the MDAs, the finance you're talking about, the, the medic, what's that organization, <clears throat> UNDS, and everybody that is part of the chain of the business. We are going to tag in, we are going to touch base with them through the URA touch point. So clients don't need to run around. And that's the point, the other benefit that I wanted to bring on board in addition to what Aisha said. The cost of doing business will definitely go down. You're not going to keep running to the tower for small things anymore. You're in Gulu, they tell you go to Moyo. You can only be served in Lira. You can only be... So that movement is no more. Inquire from the comfort of your laptop in your office and you will get instant response from URA. You don't have to run around. Why? Because in there, by the way, there is a level of receiving your issue. And if at that level the issue is not solved, it can be escalated. So, many I need commissioner, many I need assistant commissioner, many I need business policy guy who is the guru. No. You can reach those guys without necessarily getting trouble of coming here to fit in the parking. Stay where you are and work and keep touch and best with URA. So the cost of living, the gateway, the streamlined way in which people are able to get support from URA or to interact with URA is the big thing. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for that. Like, I mean, service Mungaro. I want you already, now I can get it. If uh, there is a guy who's giving me trouble in terms of uh, responsiveness, mm. he can be held accountable. Yes, I've actually talked about the laptop only, but even on the phone, we shall be sharing the link that you can put in very quickly and you're in the touch point and you can touch this with you already. Yes, Solomon, this is true. Okay, hey, um, that, that look was not a look of doubt, it was a look <laughs> of... Uh, You're amazing. I was thinking about, you know, you're going to love up. Are we seeing this evolving into an app someday for, for, for app lovers? Because some people just want to have the service in the palm of their hands and, and apps have proven to be a very good platform for helping people to, to do exactly that. Yes and no. Apps are a thing for a certain age yeah. but as you are ready we want to look at everybody now we make it as simple as just log in and have a blast with the app download it you must know how to download it you must be able to know how to save it you must be able to there's a lot that comes along with app. Mm -hmm. solomon you might pick it but many importers might never pick that. So we wanted to make it as simple as login. Web-based platform. If you have the internet, you're inside. Enter, you're in the, you have internet, you're inside. But in addition to what Grace mm. said, we are also going to integrate with the Ask QRA app, mm. which is already existing. Uh, but of course, there are some enhancements they are making. And when it, it, those enhancements are done, Touchpoint will also be part. Over so that theory. those who can use the web, they can use the web. Those who want the app, they can use the app. Those who want it on the computer, any gadget you can access. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, that brings me to uh, my second last question, really, before we get into the questions from the taxpayers, because they've started to come in. Um, everything you already does at the end of the day should have a knock-on effect in your primary job. Yes. Which is revenue. Collection. Collection. Mm -hmm. Are we starting to see benefits come in the way of URA mm -hmm. because of this improved service delivery channel? Yes, we are starting. I'll allow Aisha to give the side of um, business, analysis. business analysis because she analyzes what is coming through 
-hmm. and that's the impact that you're talking about. Aisha, take yes, it away. Um, as a business analyst, this is already helping. Uh, currently, since we piloted in, in May 2022, it has been working for almost a year. And uh, we have received a lot of data from here, and we are getting to know which processes <clears throat> actually have problems which actually we need to be starting with as a, a revenue, as, a, as an organization, there are processes we need to improve. Because if we have put all services on, online and people are still coming in to our offices for a process which you assume someone will be able to serve himself online and conclude, and they are still coming to, to our office, indicates a problem. And then we are seeing how now we are reviewing those processes uh, to get sort out what are those changes that brings people for a process that they would otherwise access at their comfort of their home. So we are reviewing all that data. This data is also informing more strategies in regards to systems. What are those systems? There are systems who we may also put them off, that some of them could be a bit redundant. And we need to do some integrations already so already the data is speaking that there are some integrations that is required. And also this data is already informing the gaps in people. We are seeing our staff who still have some competence gaps and we are able to identify. And also so that now we can tailor the training on where you, Solomon, you have a gap, not to come and train you on particular issues which you already know. But now it's also informing competence gaps among our staff and we shall be able to tackle those areas. So that, because at the end of the day, we need to be able to simplify the processes because our biggest role here is to facilitate compliance and voluntary compliance is high on the agenda on our strategic plan up to 2025. And by then, for us, we shall use this data to inform the strategies we need to do up to that time so that we improve voluntary compliance among our taxpayers. So, so sounds about right, and uh, I don't know, Grace, if you, if you have something to, there. Something that mm -hmm. comes off very quickly that I've observed. I actually, I was in Chotera, and uh, I realized that there's this line of clients that comes to either argue against the assessment, there's this discrepancy, I paid last year, and so the, the, the figure that is presented is not actually the correct one. Those are the daily, daily concerns. They're questioning the figures because naturally they think they are trimming and yet we are giving them a bigger assessment. Now, I realized that these guys immediately were put on the touch point. Mm. They logged in. We encouraged them to go. By midday, Solomon, those lines had completely gone. And whoever was disputing had gotten an, an understanding because I personally followed up. The guy who had gotten a dispute in whatever they were assessing him to pay, he got clarification with the station head of Chotera. And the guy spent the whole day on the system getting back to clients. And those guys were like, okay, I'll go and pay. Okay, I'll go and pay. So there's that clarity that we, that gap that we had. If I'm not able to reach Solomon, who I know is on leave, then ah, I'll wait tomorrow. Between today and tomorrow, I get someone who is telling me, oh, and then they'll begin to go the other way. So this is something that was timely clarity, was timely explanation for them to pay. So if we have those lines reduced at DTB, which is one of the hugest walking clients station, for me, I want to translate those reductions in lines into reductions in number of questions related to payment, reducing and therefore uh, their way into the bank to do the necessary. Thank you so much, Grace, for that. Uh, um, two things that we need to do before we uh, get the inquiries that are coming through from uh, 
uh, the taxpayers. Remember, the live tax lounge is uh, streaming live on uh, Zoom, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, a couple of other platforms. So you could utilize any of those platforms and uh, you, you catch the show. Now, this brings me to uh, the, the question that I wanted to field to uh, Grace. Yes. I'm a taxpayer and I'm sold, and uh, I would like to partake of that which you have made available today mm -hmm. in uh, the home of the URA Touchpoint. How yeah. do I go about Okay, if you're a taxpayer, we have a link. A link is your way into the system. Okay, so like you mentioned earlier, we have the web portal where there's a scroll that is saying click here to access the URA touchpoint. It is right below the headlines. Uganda Revenue Authority, then the services, then you see a scroll. <clears throat> click here to get in touch with the URA touchpoint. Please click there. And on clicking there, exactly, on clicking there, you will be required. Click again. Okay, then you click again, and then you'll be required. You will get to the touch point. This is the platform or the page where you're supposed to submit your information. You will be required to fill in your email address and your password, and then you will log in. But in the event that you do not have an account with us already, you will have to create one. Going back to the link of the touch point, that is at the web page or the web portal. Outside that, you're on your phone or whatever. We have HTTPS. We have the... Forward slash. Before the forward slash, we have the dotted line, the, the double dots, and then two forward slashes, and then we shall go to touch point. One word, touch point. More letters or cups or whatever. Touch point dot ura dot go dot ug you could say that again much faster okay some people grasp them https dots full colon full colon which is the full colon what slashes the two of them then you're going to touch point dot ura dot go dot ug and then you'll be able to access the ura touch point yes but in addition to that I just wanted to allow for Aisha to bring in the aspect of how well you can create your account in order to be able. It's a one-off. No worries. It's a one-off. You create the account, log in, and forever you'll swim. Aisha, take it away. Okay. Um, first, before we create the account, you realize the channel scrolling on at, at the top of this solution. Those are our, our official channels. And once you reach us through those channels, we are able to track your requests end to end. Anything outside these channels, uh, we also have a web chat on the website. Anything outside these channels, we shall not be able to track your issue. Now, this is the platform where you, you're, you're required to reach us. And um, your platform, you'll be required to register. Now, uh, taxpayers already, there are those who are asking, we already have teens and password. What come July, you'll find this already in your account, your, in your teen account, and then you will not be required to register, neither will you be required to log in again. Mm -hmm. But for now, we have not yet put it there. Uh, you don't need to register to call us using the toll free line, you don't need to register to send us a WhatsApp or email. But if you're going to log your issue using this platform direct, you need first to register. I need to, sh to demo how to register. I'm not going to use it here. I'm not going to do on this. I need to use mine, which we always use this site. Uh, to register, you'll have to select a, tax, a, a client category. There's a reason we have marked this category like this. Clearing agent and domestic tax agent. This solution, I'm very sure it will be good for you to use because of the nature of your work. You represent other people, 
and we wouldn't want to be asking you questions whether you have been appointed or not to act on their behalf. But if you use this solution, we shall be a have access to that information and we shall be able to serve you. But if you don't use this solution, we shall limit you on the kind of responses we shall give you based on the questions you ask. But I will demo using the taxpayer, which I assume most of you are. And then uh, when you select uh, your category, sorry, you select your category as taxpayer. Uh, a tin is not mandatory, mm -hmm. but then when you give us a tin, it's prudent that you give us a tin so that we shall be able to identify you. You put in the tin you use, if you have a company, you can use one tin and then we shall auto populate your name. But then, where you don't have a tin, it's still okay. For you who doesn't have, you can still add later. I'll be showing you. But then, your name, the name is mandatory. You can use any name, your name, which you want us to call you. But it will be prudent that you use that name that is on your tin. And you put in your email address, which you want to register. Where you put in an email address and it tells you the email you have entered is not allowed in the system, use a different email, or you, you may find an error telling you that it has already been used on another account, please click here to log in. So when you click on login, you reset a password, you'll be able to, log, to reset a password and get, uh, get login because there are those who have already communicated to us through services mail. We have already created an account on your behalf. Now, you give us the telephone contact which you want to use And the, we shall send you an OTP online. You create the password you want to use for this solution. It may be the same as the one of the tin or not, depending on what you prefer. You enter this image. Repeat about OTP. Where is it sent? The oh, one-time password, we are going to send it on mail the first, the first time. We are not, we are not, uh, we have not activated the SMS, but when it's ready, we shall let you know. Once you enter the image, you register and we shall give you this pop-up that we have created. We have sent you an OTP on your email address, which you've entered. And then you'll be able to, you'll be required to get that OTP and put here and submit. Once you submit, your account will be created. And now you can, you are able to log in. So I'm going to demo on what you see when you log in before you submit your request. The login ID we have used is email address because we realized that uh, the thing you can easily forget, but you may hardly forget your email address, however complicated it may look to another person. Uh, because since this is the support tool, we are not complicating it so much. We are giving you a leeway to use what is most convenient for you. So when you log in after you've created an account, when you log in, this is the platform, or this is the landing page. And when it come July, we shall put this as a link in your TIN account. Click here for help. And once you click there, you land on this page and you are able to load your request. We don't want you to get stuck at any one moment. So when you log in, we have given you an opportunity to update your profile or change password. You'll go there and see, but the default one is to create ticket. Creating ticket now, you're coming to load the request. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the whole, URA, the whole organization is on this platform. So you find that we have customs, domestic taxes, uh, the other side, corporate fi fi uh, we corporate services where we have finance and procurement um, uh, and the HR for career issues and all that. Uh, this whole, this first button is the whole customs department. Anything you need to ask customs, you select import and exports customs. And for the, for customs, it requires you to know the station where your problem is. And that is how we have presented. When you select that station, we give you issues that 
relate to that station. And then you'll find the other information, maybe if it's administrative, then what do you need from Mombasa? Maybe motor vehicle. Then what is it about motor vehicle? You need maybe to generate an exit note. And then you give us a brief subject, a description, and submit. And then this issue is channeled to Mombasa to support you. Uh, whereas domestic taxes and other departments, we have not presented it in that way. Uh, challenge being that uh, uh, we know you know we exist, but you don't know how we are organized to serve you. It may be hard for you to know who is processing your credit note. Mm -hmm. It may be hard for you to know who is processing your tax clearance. Mm -hmm. But what we want to have presented with you is where is your issue? My issue is on tax clearance. You come here, select tax clearance. Once you select that, just a moment. You come here, tell us my issue is on tax clearance. Once you select that, and then come and tell us the support, the issue is about tax clearance application. If you already applied and you're following up, give us the reference number. If you if not, you're having challenges in application, you or you give us the TIN and then you submit. If you have anything to attach, you come here, attach anything you want to give us. You attach anything you want to give us and submit. Once you submit, it will be directed to the people who are supposed to serve you. I urge you to put your TIN because we are using it to identify you. And we shall be able to channel this request to that office which is supposed to serve you. And oh, you come and tell us that my issue probably is on IFRIS. And then what is it about IFRIS? It's maybe credit note. And if, 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 if it's credit note, we urge you to give us a tin still. You give us the FDN if it's one. If there are many, you browse and attach that the list of those credit notes you, you're following up. Give us a subject, maybe follow up. Tell us what you want what you want us to you want us to know about this request, please. This give us as much information as possible. This field is dynamic based on the information you fill in. Um, when once you submit, for us, we are channeling this to the office which is supposed to serve you. Once you submit, we are giving you a reference number for that particular request and also storing all your requests in this tab so that later you can use them. Now, this it shows that uh, I have a request here which I've just submitted. It's pending because it has just reached URA. And um, at least I'm able to know other requests which I have submitted previously and their respective status. And I'll give you a brief about this status so that you get to appreciate them. Pending, it means it has reached URA, but then not yet resolved. But then mm -hmm. when you submitted, we don't only give you this pop-up. We are also giving you a notification on your email. For it, it's a bit, a bit elaborate because it's even telling you the time you should expect feedback from us. Mm -hmm. Now... Here, they're showing me that this ticket is still pending with URA, not yet resolved. And once it gets resolved, it will change the status. But still, when we resolve, you also receive a notification on your email, informing you even the resolution we have, how we have handled it. And when we resolve, we also give you an opportunity to appeal to the ticket. It means when you read here what they have told you, when, once you feel you are not satisfied, you will come here and click and appeal to this ticket, to this resolution. You are not satisfied and tell us, give us the reason why you are not satisfied so that it can be reviewed by other people mm -hmm. to give you the most appropriate resolution you expected. But we shall also be interacting given the contacts you've already given us. Another status we have is queried. Queried, um, what we did, most of you have complained about rejection, rejection. So what we did, the rejection button, we may not have it as staff. And we have given them a button to use for them 
if they have any clarification they need from your side and we shall be querying and when we query it means it has come to you to give us more information so that we are able to serve you so you come here and read what we have maybe we have asked for a team we have asked you to submit a certain form like that and then you come here and respond to the query once you respond to that query it comes back and we are able to support you uh we shall have another status called closed closed is the last status where we have resolved and we are waiting we are giving you like 48 hours after we have resolved if you have anything to dispute on that very resolution you get back to us within 48 hours even when we query we are giving you timelines within which you are supposed to respond to us because some things we shall also not wait forever we also want to serve you as soon as possible but if you don't aid us you don't facilitate us in serving you it will be a little hard for us as as well so we require that when once you lodge an, a, a request to your a uh, at least we shall be communicating with you on email. Please pay attention to it. Once you see an email from us, uh, pay attention to it so that you can give us the feedback we require to be able to proceed. Where we have resolved and you're not satisfied, please let us know. Uh, these are the things we are telling you that has been lacking. Because if you call me on my personal line, you will not have an opportunity to appeal to a request which you have which I have handled. When you send in my inbox email, URA at URA.go.ug, yes, I will receive. But if I serve you, I don't serve you, nobody gets to know. But when you use this solution, once we send like this, the, we broadcast the whole office so that even the supervisor can get to know that I have a ticket that is pending in my, I have a request for a particular taxpayer that is pending in my login. And maybe if I'm not on my desk, someone else can attend to it. The challenges we shall have if you still continue to contact us in our respective emails, you call us, and at the end of the day, you are not served. The challenge we shall have is that we don't have visibility, mm. and therefore it will be challenging for us. Uh, at the end of the day, you are not meeting your tax obligation. You are not complying because you tried to contact one of us, and you have not been supported. That's what now we want to avoid. You use this solution, send us your request, and hold us accountable. That's what we are looking forward to. Um, this is these are the functionalities. The rest we do it ourselves. I uh, don't mind when you send a request, even if it requires our interaction with other departments, because there, are, for instance, if um, a request came in for for ledger reconciliation, for ledger reconciliation, please make sure. You attach a letter signed by the director of the company, just in case it's a company, uh, attach the letter, or make sure the, the, you use the company account, especially for agents. Once you're <laughs> requesting for a ledger reconciliation, ensure the letter which is attached is on headed of the company because a ledger position is not issued to anyone else who is not authorized. And also make sure you are appointed by that client for you to be able to act on their behalf. Uh, we have we have also issue requests that come in that requires interaction with other departments. For you, don't worry, load your issue, and then the role is with us as URA to interact with other departments to ensure we serve you in the timelines we have communicated in the notification when we received your issue. The rest you don't need to worry. We, uh, because now we are looking at how do we then minimize referring you from one office to another? Now you don't need to move. The requ your request will move from one office to another, and then we are looking at the timelines we have communicated in the not notification we have given you when you lodged your request with us. I think this is it about the demo. Uh, thank you so much, Aisha, for taking us on uh, a quick tour of how the platform works. Uh, it looks really fantastic if you ask me because whenever you don't have visibility it's very hard to expect accountability but now if we have visibility guaranteed it can only mean that uh, accountability is also secured on the side of URA and that means excellent service provided to the client because the clients come to us when they have issues and their expectation is resolution 
So this system is indeed going to uh, help us achieve that. But uh, we do have a couple of questions coming from uh, the platform that is Zoom. And uh, I think it's only fair that we attend to them really quickly before we bring this program to a close. Mm. And the very first question is coming from uh, Anonymous attendee. And uh, Anonymous is saying, what is the implication of the tool on normal business operations, especially where there is a need to uh, attach reviewed files at every level of management for approval? This question kind of sounds like a question that would come from the person who is serving inside, inside your area. Mm -hmm. But let me read it again. What is the implication of the tool on normal business operations, especially where there is need to attach reviewed files at every level of management for approval? Uh, that's the question. The second question is uh, a question that is coming from a lady called uh, Namubiru Annette, and she's asking, is the CRM configured to serve as a contact center? Is the CRM configured to serve as a contact center? That is the question that has come in from uh, Namubiru Annette. Then we do have uh, another question from uh, Ogutu Filmon uh, via Facebook. And uh, Ubuntu is saying the channel you are using is capturing a very small number. I think he's talking about the show. Then he's also saying business people up country don't have smartphones, don't know social media channels. How is the message going to reach them? It is a question that is probably asking the people who are communicating about the new platform on behalf of URA. Uh, that is, it's, it's a two-in-one question for him. And I think this is something that I can actually address quickly because I serve with uh, the public and corporate affairs team and that is the team that does the communication. Philmon, I can assure you that this is just one of the many avenues that we are exploring when it comes to uh, communicating to the taxpayers about uh, new initiatives. So you should expect uh, a lot more communications coming your way via the radio, via the television, because all these are platforms that we actually do use and we know that the public massively uh, consumes information from these platforms. Then uh, you should also expect a full-on campaign that is uh, purpose to uh, normalize this as the new platform of choice for people to uh, reach URA, should they be having inquiries of any nature, issues that they would like to have resolved. So yes, we agree with you. This particular channel is uh, capturing only uh, the digital savvy people but we have a lot more uh, platforms for consideration and uh, the message is coming your way. Then the next question that he had, because it's a two-in-one, is a question that is uh, saying, why did you people dictate the taxes to be paid by local retail shops instead of telling them to keep records for you to calculate the right taxes? Uh, I think it's a question on presumptive. Um, any one of you can take on any one of these questions. And uh, where possible, I would like to come back to film on, on the issue of uh, presumptive tax because the answer is, is here. Can we start with that? Let's first address the CRM questions. The URA touch point. Yes, the URA touch point questions. The questions were, what is the implication of the tool on normal business operations, especially where there is need to attach reviewed files at every level of management for approval? The second question is, is the CRM configured to serve as a contact center? Okay, uh, the first question, uh, we, have, we, are, we are allowing attachment at every stage of processing. If that's the staff, we are allowing, even the client can attach and a staff can also attach mm. at every stage, but we are allowing a maximum of 50, 50 MB for now. And then it can improve as we go on and also looking after we have analyzed analyzed the volume of the attachment that is that are coming in, mm. we shall be able to adjust accordingly. But for now we are allowing up to 50 MB. We allow attachment at every level of processing a request. Uh, for instance, the request comes to the, from the taxpayer, he has attached business policy, if he goes to business policy, they review and they have something to attach. Before they send to legal, legal also can attach and bring back business policy. The same, they can attach. Each one has a, a, a buffer of up to 50 yes, MBs. Yes. And then the other one is uh, CRM replacing 
is, is, is it center. configured to serve as a contact center? I, if we moved away from CRM, it's called the touch point. Mm -hmm. But then this touch point is serving us as one stop center for all requests to Uganda Revenue Authority. And of course, issues are being addressed as they come in. There are those we are channeling direct the respective offices because of their sensitivity mm -hmm. and to avoid delays because they have high impact on their business. And there are those that are being handled first at the contact center. So it depends on the nature of the issue. That's why we have categorized them. And then there are those that are sensitive. For instance, the whistleblowing. It's being channeled to respective office. If you're reporting a URS staff, it shouldn't go where. It should be channeled to an office staff compliance that are handling such nature of request. So it's, it's, it's configured as one stop center for all requests and support to URA, but then we are handling each issue differently based on the nature and the impact it has on our business and the taxpayers' business. Uh, thank you so much, Grace. Uh, Aisha, Grace, you have something to submit to any of those two inquiries? Yeah, the second one, is it configured? Uh, I think they're also trying to see that what is the difference between the contact center and the URA touch point. The contact center, uh, for lack of a better word, yes, URA has a fully fledged contact center, which has the voice, which is the, okay. the toll free lines. Please continue calling them. So we have a group of young men and women seated there responding to all your voice requests and issues. Within the contact center, there is both voice, there is quality, there is chat, there is feedback management, there is mail, there is the WhatsApp. That is the contact center of URA. Meaning when the URA touch point comes in, it has preview of everything that is happening in the contact center, including voice, including chat, including email, including everything. Now, our contact center in regard to the URA touch point is the place which I would call our first, the entry point of the issues, right? And as Aisha has said, when the issue is submitted to URA and it is re in regard to any business, and it can be addressed in the contact center, so be it. Let the DT specialist go and give it their best shot. However, there are some specific issues that will need legal, that will need business policy, as she has mentioned. Then it leaves the contact center and it is escalated to those places. So the idea of the contact center is that contact is through voice, is through chat, is through email, is through a number of platforms that you are runs. So use them. At the contact center, we shall pick your calls, we shall do everything. However, beyond that, which is what the touch point is going to bring in, we are going to move from that call center and say, Solomon Chimbukwe, the newspaper says this because you're working in PCA. Are these numbers correct or not? And you provide clarity immediately. We are going to run an advert. We are going to change or it is correct. We have changed the filing date from 15th to and extended it to 20th because of 3rd June or because it fell on the weekend or because there is COVID. Then you provide clarity from PCA. So it leaves the contact center and it goes to the specific business unit depending on the request. So the configuration aspect, I would say it is not configured that way because it is beyond voice, beyond chat, it is beyond, it is configured to integrate those things. Whereas the contact center is configured to take on the different separate platforms. 
independence. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for making that clarity. It is uh, beyond the contact center because it, it, it does a lot more than just resolving uh, issues that people usually have because uh, we, it's encompassing so many other elements. Um, I would like to uh, address the, the, the issue of uh, Philmon um, and tell him that the way the, you... His question was about uh, why did you people dictate the taxes to be paid by local retail shops instead of telling them to keep records for you to calculate the right prices, the right taxes, sorry. And uh, th this is an issue of uh, appreciating the, the, the tax regime that Uganda is actually operating. And uh, the, the tax regime that Uganda is operating is one that favors the bookkeeper. And that is why we are always preaching the gospel of uh, bookkeeping, because the way the tax uh, system is set up, it is purpose to benefit that person who is in touch with his business yeah. progress. Yeah. And, uh, and here is why. Um, if someone is running a business whose turnover is below 10 million UGX and they can back it up with uh, books of account, yeah. then that person is not expected to pay tax because the law provides for intubation of businesses so that businesses go through the process of growth. Then if a business <clears throat> is uh, in uh, a turnover that ranges from uh, above 10 million UGX to 150 million UGX, then that business falls within what we call the presumptive schedule because it is considered a small business for tax purposes. Yeah. And uh, even therein, you will find that uh, there are rates that are payable between a business that keeps books and a business that does not keep books. Mm -hmm. So even in there, we still see the person who is avid about bookkeeping being favored yeah. by the tax regime. And uh, the person who is not keeping books mm -hmm. is uh, being unfavored, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So it is in our interest and in the interest of every business person to actually keep books. That's why we keep on uh, advocating for people to keep books because if you do keep books then you can apply the rates and you pay something that is a lot more fair compared to that person who did not do the job of keeping books because when you look at the presumptive uh, rates for instance for a business whose gross turnover exceeds 10 million but does not exceed uh, 30 million UGX a person with books of account will pay 0.4% uh, of annual turnover in excess of 10 million. So they apply the 0.4% to um, any money that is above the 10 million threshold. Mm -hmm. While a person who does not have records will find themselves paying a flat fee of 80,000. Okay. Um, while the other guy is paying something that is as low as maybe 40,000, mm -hmm. this person without books is paying a flat fee of 80,000. The advantage is always on the guy who actually keeps books. Then when you look at uh, the next category there, and that is uh, the cluster of businesses whose turnover is ranging between 30 million and 50 million, you'll realize that a person with records is going to pay 80,000 plus 0.5% of annual turnover that is in excess of 30 million. While a person without records is actually going to pay 200,000 a flat fee, no discussion. Then uh, it, it continues because as yeah, businesses yeah. grow, you know, e even the payables increase. Now, for businesses who fall in the cluster that is within a 50 million turnover, mm -hmm. but are not beyond 80 million turnover, mm -hmm. uh, a person with business records, a person who has been keeping books, will actually pay 180,000 UGX plus 0.6% of the annual turnover that is in excess of 50 million. While his colleague who does not keep books, who does not have business records, is actually having to pay 400,000 flat. Then the last category, and this is where a person has really grown and they're almost going out of the presumptive schedule radar, that is where we do have people whose uh, business is in uh, the bracket of 80, above 80 million, but not beyond 150 million. Uh, they're almost hitting the presumptive ceiling. And, uh, it, a person with books, a person with records, even in this category, will find themselves paying 360,000 
plus 0.7 percent of any annual turnover that is in excess of 80 million while on the other side a person who does not keep books is actually paying 900,000 flat no discussion uh, what this means is that uh, Philmon businesses that have business operators keeping their books will always pay something that is accurate something that is uh, predeterminable and uh, this is something that the person who's actually running the business can even cal calculate and compute on their own accord because they've been keeping the books while someone who has not been keeping books is uh, in a, a position of disadvantage because then they either have to pay the flat rate or in extreme cases they have to face assessments mm. that are actually generated by URA and chances are high that you might end up paying something that is slightly higher mm -hmm. than what you should actually pay. So mm -hmm. it is in your favor to keep books, and that is the gospel that we are always preaching. Keep books and pay the right thing. Okay, uh, I would like to use this opportunity because time check it's 11, uh, 9 a.m., and I would like to, because we don't seem to have any more questions Apart from a question from Teresa, who is saying, where do we get the details of presumptive tax that Solomon is talking about? Quick answer, the details are on the URL website. If you can visit the URL website, you go to the A to Z tax category, or you go to the tax education tab. It will give you a, a, a drop down that will give you access to the A to Z uh, tax category. And this is where you'll find all the de depositories of uh, tax education content that you could use pick up the content that is uh, labeled small business tax payment. Uh, in there, you will find uh, a breakdown of everything to do with uh, the presumptive tax that I've just been talking about right here, right now. But at this very minute, please allow me to give uh, the opportunity to Aisha and uh, Grace. Aisha will speak first to give their parting shot. Thank you very much, Solomon and the entire team. Uh, for giving us this opportunity to share with the public what we have been cooking and what we are still cooking. Uh, what we need to tell our clients, uh, please use the solution. Use the official channels to communicate to URA so that it gives our leaders visibility in how you're being served so that now we shall have an opportunity to discuss where the gaps are and <laughs> They always say feedback is food for the soul. We cannot do without you telling us the gaps we have. The feedback module is also coming fully fledged in July, and then we shall encourage you to give us as much feedback as possible. Now we have the entire team that is sitting down to analyze that feedback so that going forward it can inform what we do. It can inform our strategy. Other than those other things you mentioned in the report, that we just come up with initiatives without being informed by your voice. We now want to start. Now we have the information. We know where to touch. Please, we encourage you to use the solution so that we are served better. Otherwise, when you continue using the other channels, we shall have challenges knowing who served you, how, and whether you served in time or not. But with this solution, as Grace has presented it, it is integrating all those official channels, toll free line, the WhatsApp line, the web chat, the services mail, and anything else that has been communicated to you as an official channel to reach your aid. Mm -hmm. Whether we are there or not, we are in office or not, someone else can be able to serve you. But if you call on my personal line and I tell you I'm busy and I don't serve you, then it will be damaging us because we miss out on the opportunity of how much you would pay by complying. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aisha, for uh, those parting shots. Grace, it's your yes, opportunity. I just want to thank you for listening in, but very critical. Please do not get tired of Uganda Revenue Authority and the change that they're bringing on board. This change is for you. This change is for us to respond to the concerns that you have raised over the years about how well we are serving you. Critical to, to, to take note of is that your rate sits down every after five years and management and the board of directors, just like any other business, have to look, have to monitor, have to evaluate how well we have performed. 
the client will be consistent on the plan and on the strategy of how well we can collect revenue. We cannot do without you. So that client as a perspective is very critical. Yes, the revenue is critical, <laughs> but this cow that we are milking has to be well. So for any initiative that URA is bringing on board to improve the quality of service through very good stakeholder engagement and collaboration, very many initiatives will come on board, such as the URA touch point. We are ready to improve the quality of service. We want you to be our greatest ambassadors. Those of you who have listened in this morning, please preach the gospel. HTTP semicolon, uh, full colon, double forward slashes, touchpoints.ura.gov.ug is how we can get in here. The registration that Aisha talked about is a one-off. Please don't be scared. Fill in your details, your, your details, and that will be the end. On another event, you will just come through with just logging in as easy as we have illustrated. The last bit is that this client, who is you? We want to thank you so much for paying taxes. And we are not going to stop to improve, to get you to work, to get you to comply with a lot of ease, with a lot of voluntarily mentality. Come, stay in your office, pay taxes with ease. The other thing that I wanted to leave without mentioning is the fact that what is changing today? What is changing is that we are integrating the support channels through the URA touchpoint, which is a system that is going to enable URA have an enterprise-wide interactive client support hub, which is the URA touchpoint. But to mention as well, what is not changing? The other platforms have not been closed. You can still get us through the voice infrastructure, which is our toll-free line. 0800-217-000. We still have the URA support email address, which is services at ura.go.ug. Please use it. We have visibility into what you're trying to, to communicate with URA. We still have our chat. Please, we have a WhatsApp number. It is 0772-140-000. Please, the young people, go ahead. Even me, even the adults who are able to chat with URA, please use that platform. All right? And then we close off by promising yet something that is coming. We are going to cook better than we have cooked via the URA web portal, which is our website. You have given us very good feedback, and we have responded. URA is yet to give you a better website. A website that can speak to you, that is not cluttered, that can help you pay taxes instantly, that can help you get a registration done instantly, that can help you give and provide information and anything about taxation or URA services. You will be able to get from the website. So. Keep on because we are not going to stop cooking. We are bringing on board something better. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for uh, that parting shot. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this show. I would like to use this opportunity to salute the people that you do not see, the men behind uh, the camera and the lady. And that is none other than Paul Kawanguzi, uh, the producer for this particular episode. Uh, the director, Trevor Sentongo, and uh, Ebenezer on camera, together with uh, the only lady on the crew, Irene Kabakama. From all of us at URA TV to all of you, adios. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Uganda Revenue Authority. 
Developing Uganda Together. Uganda Revenue Authority. <laughs>